Well, hello, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are beginning our journey into Unit 6 of our Everyday Math series. We are in our math journal on page 191. Uh, the title of this lesson is Extended Division Facts, Lesson 1 of Unit 6. Now, before we get into extending our uh, division facts, we need to first talk about what are division facts. So if you would please take a look for a moment at this array, I have two rows with three dots in each row, okay? Because two times three equals six. And as you can see, there is a fact family triangle set up to represent that amount. So if I have two rows and there are three uh, dots in each row, I can uh, represent the multiplication fact of 2 times 3 equals 6. Or I can talk about how there are three columns, and there are two dots in each column because 3 times 2 equals 6. Now, when I'm thinking in terms of division, I'm just going to flip uh, that problem around. And instead of thinking about groups, put together, I'm going to be taking those groups apart, okay? So again, for example, I can divide 6 into 2 groups and have 3 in each group. 6 divided into 2 groups would give me 3 in each group. Or I could have 6 divided into 3 groups. 6 divided into 3 groups would leave me 2 in each group. So as you can see, this one fact family triangle represents a total of four types of uh, number sentences. Two multiplication problems and two division problems. Okay. So now that we've got that all cleared up, let's move on to some uh, extended division facts. Okay. So problem number one, as we can see, there is a fact family triangle. Uh, we see the number 8 at the bottom, and we see the number 240 at the top. So if we were thinking about this in terms of a multiplication problem, this problem would be 8 times something gives me 240. Now, for a hot minute, we're going to ignore the 0 in 240 for a moment. Just think of it as 24. Now, the basic fact that we have here is 24 divided into 8 groups would give us something. So, again, I need to think of what times 8 gives me 24. And that, of course, would be 3. 3 times 8. So, 24 divided into 8 groups would give me 3 in each group. Okay? 8 times 3 is 24. Now, when I add that 0 and put that 0 into play, okay, I have to add that zero to one of the factors, okay? It's either on uh, the same side of the, uh, the equation or the same side of the equal sign or it's on the opposite side. But there has to be a balance of zeros. So if 240 is divided into eight groups, 24 divided by eight would be three. 24 divided into eight groups would be three tens. If 24 ends in a zero, or is 24 tens, okay? So I have a zero on the left-hand side of my equation, and I have a zero on the right side of my equation. 8 times 30 gives me 240, or 8 times 3 tens gives me 24 tens, okay? Now if we go back to our fact family here, 2 times 3 equals 6, let's say instead of having... Uh, six dots. We have six groups of ten, okay, or sixty. So let's drop in an extra zero right here, okay? There's one of two ways we can get to sixty with the fact family of two times three and six, okay? I could either have two groups of thirty, two times three tens gives me three tens, or I could have three groups of 20. 3 times 20 gives me 60. Okay, So this is how I rub these problems out. Two groups with 30 or 3 tens in each group is going to give me 6 tens, 
or three groups with 20 in each group would give me six tens or 60. Again, it's just a matter of counting those zeros. As long as I have a zero in one of my factors, I'm going to have to have a zero in, one, in my product. Okay? Let's try another problem, shall we? What times 4 gives me 280? Well, again, I have to ask myself, what times 4 gives me 28? Okay. So when I have a multiplication problem with a missing factor, it's just another way of representing a division problem. 28 divided into 4 groups would give me how many in each group? Well, that would be 7, because 7 times 4 is 28. So if I have 28 tens, or 280, and if I divided that into four groups, because four is the factor I know, I'm going to have seven groups of 10, or 70. Four times seven tens, or four times 70, equals 280. There's a zero in one of the factors, there's a zero in the product. And that's all we're doing here when we are extending division facts. We are just thinking about the single digit multiplication and division facts that we already know, and we're just adding in some zeros. Okay? Let's take a look at uh, problem number six, shall we? This time we have two zeros. Okay? And when we have two zeros, that means there has to be two zeros in one of our factors. Okay? Now, as you can see, nine does not have any zeros, so that means that my other factor has to. So, remind me, what times 9 gives me 63? 9 times something does. And, of course, that would be 7. 9 times 7 gives me 63. So, I can turn that around. 63 divided into 9 groups is going to give me 7 in each group. Okay. So, now let's make an extended division fact. So, I'm going to take the 63... And I'm going to add a couple of zeros. One, two. And I'm going to divide that by the same factor. Nine. Sixty-three divided by nine is going to give me seven. Right? But now I have to add those extra zeros in. So it's not seven. It's seven groups of 100, or 700. Okay? And that's how I extend that division fact. I just have to remember to count my zeros. Okay? I have... One, two zeros in my div dividend, and I have one, two zeros in my quotient. Okay? Now there's another way I could represent this amount, or another way I can get to 6,300. Okay? Let's say instead, instead of 9, I had 9 tens, or 90. Okay? If I were to do that, I'd still start with. 6,300 or 6,300, but because I have nine tens or nine with one zero behind it, my quotient would be seven with one zero behind it. Okay, both my factors would have to have one zero to add up to the two zeros that are part of my dividend. What I'm trying to divide. Okay, or I could even Start out with two zeros behind the nine, okay? 6,300 divided by 900, okay? And again, if I have my zeros in place, then all I have to do is put the quotient to seven. 6,300 divided into 900 groups would give me seven in each group, okay? Try these problems out on your own. Uh, I want you to try numbers 3, 4, and 5 on your own. And then take some time to explain how you came about with uh, solving the problem for number 5. That's what you would do for number 7. Uh, you can use the kinds of explanations that I just gave you in this video. Okay? If you have questions, please reach out to your math teacher. Whether you are live in the classroom and you're doing this as part of homework or you are watching this from home and you are a virtual student, 
whatever your situation is right now, you need to talk to your math teacher if you have questions. Okay, they are happy to help you. As am I. I am happy to help you with these videos, and I hope that this one was uh, useful to you. Until we speak again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.